There's something mystical when it comes to a heat pump system. We know it runs like a normal air conditioner in the cooling season, but when we get into the heating season, some extra components come into play and we get a little confused or lose track of the sequence of operation for a heat pump. So let's go over some of the basics that even I have to review from time to time because heat pumps are not my strongest suit. I have a video called Basic Heat Pump Operation that you might want to refer to if you need an even more stripped down version of the heat pump operation. This one's gonna go in a little bit more into the defrost function and what we should be checking to diagnose the heat pump that's not working or might be frozen over in heating mode on a cool day. So let's quickly review some things that we learned in the last video. In cooling mode, the heat pump works just like an air conditioner. The refrigerant cycles through the system and basically makes the indoor coil, the cold coil, and the outdoor unit's coil, the hot coil. We remove the heat from inside the house to the outdoor unit and pull it out there to be released into the atmosphere. In heating mode, a reversing valve reverses the flow of refrigerant to make the indoor coil, the hot coil, and the outdoor coil, the cold coil. So we're trying to extract heat from outside and bring it inside which can be done down to a certain outdoor temperature. After that, there's very little heat in the air to extract, so heat strips will kick in to supplement that effort. A regular occurrence with a heat pump in the heating season is for the outdoor unit to go through a defrost cycle. You can imagine that cold outdoor coil interacting with the cold outdoor temperatures can cause some freezing. Anytime it gets below 40 degrees outside, the outdoor coil, being the cold coil, develops frost on it. It can't keep operating this way or the frost will develop into a straight up ice block. So we wanna melt this frost away essentially by switching back into cooling mode because remember in cooling mode, the outdoor coil becomes the hot coil. You'll notice when you wire in the low voltage on a heat pump, you're not just wiring in two wires like on a normal AC condenser. Single stage heat pumps need five wires running outside to them. Red for 24 volts, blue for common, which can be labeled B or C on defrost boards, orange for the reversing valve or the O terminal, yellow for first stage compressor or the Y terminal, and something like a black or brown for the X2 terminal or emergency heat. Notice I didn't say Y for cooling because the same Y terminal is energized whether we're in cooling or heating mode. We're essentially energizing the compressor and the fan to come on at the outdoor unit. Whether we want to be in cooling or heating is up to the O terminal being energized or not. Remember, these wires can be any color coming from the indoor air handler to the outdoor heat pump. All wires are copper inside. So for the wide terminal at the heat pump defrost board, if a wire with purple sheathing leaves the wide terminal at the indoor air handler, then the other end of that purple wire should be tied into the wide terminal at the heat pump. It doesn't matter what color the wire is. The reason why we have so many wires coming to the outdoor unit is to relay signals given from the heat pump to the air handler when it does go into defrost. The defrost board is the quarterback for this whole play too. For the defrost cycle to begin, two things have to happen. A sensor attached to the outdoor refrigerant coil, the copper coil or aluminum, has to get down to 26 degrees Fahrenheit. And a second requirement is that the defrost has to agree that the compressor has run the required amount of time. On the equipment that I usually work on, it's either 45 or 90 minutes. When those two requirements have been met, a contact on the defrost board closes, completing a circuit to read 24 volts at X2 so that the heat strips on the air handler will come on. Inside at the air handler, the fan still blows, which means there's cold air coming out of the ducts. But the air handler's heat strips come on to sort of neutralize that cold air. That same circuit closing causes the O terminal to have 24 volts which reverses the flow of refrigerant to the cooling mode. You'll hear when that happens too because the reversing valve makes a pretty noticeable whooshing sound when the change in direction happens. We'll explain more about the reversing valve in another video though. The third thing that happens when the circuit closes is a set of contacts open to stop the outdoor fan motor. This is to help warm the coils up faster because if we were drawing cold air across the outdoor coils when we were trying to warm them up, it would be counterproductive. You would think that the reversing valve would energize to go into heating mode, 
But on 90% of the systems out there, not having 24 volts to the reversing valve causes the system by default to go into heating mode. In most parts of the country, having heat is more important than having cool air, so the reversing valve on a heat pump defaults to heating mode. Here in California during the summertime, we would strongly disagree with that. So what have we done here, and what terminals are supposed to be reading what voltage when defrost happens? You'll see that 24 volts can be read between C and R on the defrost board, 24 volts can be read between C and O, 24 volts can be read between C and Y, 24 volts can be read between C and X2, or whatever the emergency heat terminals happen to be labeled on your equipment. Also, the high voltage wires, usually labeled D1 and D2 on the defrost board, leading to the outdoor fan motor, will only be sending 120 to the motor instead of 240. So one of those terminals will have 120 to ground and the other terminal will have zero volts to ground. What needs to happen for the demand defrost cycle to complete? When the liquid temperature leaving the outdoor coil reaches about 50 degrees, the defrost termination relay on the defrost board opens. If the temperature doesn't rise to that point after 10 minutes, an override switch will open and de-energize the relay, which will terminate the defrost cycle. One last time, the reversing valve makes a big whooshing sound and switches the flow of refrigerant back to heating mode. The outdoor fan turns on, the heat strips inside turn off, and the indoor coil becomes the hot coil again. When defrost has completed and the system has gone back into heating mode, here are the voltages that you'll read back at those same terminals from earlier. 24 volts can be read from C to R on the defrost board. Zero volts can be read between C and O. 24 volts can be read between C and Y. Zero volts can be read between C and X2, or whatever the emergency heat terminals happen to be labeled on your equipment. Also, the high voltage wires on the defrost board leading to the outdoor fan motor will be reading 120 to ground on each terminal. If you find that the outdoor heat pump is turning into a giant ice ball, there's a few things to check before condemning the defrost board. After the system has been turned off a while and the ice is melted, let's make sure that the coils are clean because restricted airflow across the indoor or the outdoor coil can cause things to ice up. If the coils are clean, then we need to check the refrigerant levels. And if those are good, then something else is going wrong with the defrost operation. It could be the refrigerant line or ambient sensors, the actual board itself, or the reversing valve that's malfunctioning. Most of the time, the temperature sensors are permanently attached to the defrost board, so if they're not reading correctly, the whole board would need to be replaced. Installation guys have tables that show the resistance that the sensors should be reading at certain temperatures. Using your meter and some super thin leads will help you determine the readings. Remember, the defrost board sends 24 volts to the reversing valve at the O terminal. Is that 24 volts reaching the solenoid on the reversing valve? No? Then check the wire connections. If they're good, then the defrost board itself is likely bad. Yes, you do have 24 volts? Then something's going wrong with that solenoid or the valve itself. But the defrost board, it's doing its job. Just like with control boards on a furnace, if the board is giving proper voltage to the motor and the motor isn't working, it's not the board. If the board isn't giving proper voltage, then it's the board or something else upstream of it. See, defrost boards aren't that hard, huh? So the next time you walk up on an iced up heat pump and you forget what to do, you can always refer back to this video. If this is your first time watching our videos, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.